hello and welcome to our brand new Panorama Photography mini-series. This first episode will help us to introduce you to Panorama Photography. Our goal is to make sure that by the end of this tutorial, you will know what Panorama Photography is. You will learn the types of Panorama images and understand the basics of capturing and stitching photos for Panorama. By understanding all of this, you will be ready for the next episode where we will go out and learn the basics of capturing Panorama with your own camera. Starting from the beginning, it's important that you understand what is the panoramic photography. Now the panoramic photography, also known as a wide format photography, is a special technique that stitches multiple images from the same camera together to form a single wide photo. This can be of course done vertically or horizontally. To understand even further, we need to look at the meaning of the word panorama. The term panorama literally means all side in Greek, and it was first originated from the painters that wanted to capture a wide view of a landscape, not just a certain part of it. Now moving few hundred years forward and looking at the first panoramic photographs. They were made by simply aligning printed versions of the film. Of course that the result didn't turn out very well because it was close to impossible to perfectly align photographs. However, thanks to the development of the personal computing, computer software and the digital photography, merging digital images with the specialized software is much simpler. You can now create almost perfect panoramas at incredibly high resolution with the correct photography technique. So now we know what is panoramic photography, we also know the meaning of the panorama and we know a little bit about the history of the technique. However, looking at creating panoramas now, we should understand the basics. Well, usually in panorama photography, you take multiple photos that overlap with each other and merge them using software like Luminar Neo, Photoshop or Lightroom to create a single white image. Now the single white image can come in multiple different formats. The one that is the most common is the wide angle panorama. The wide angle panorama covers less than 180 degrees and is stitched from several photos. Usually the final image comes with a higher resolution. The second format is very similar to the wide angle panorama and it's called vertorama. A vertorama is simply a panorama but shot vertically. It uses much of the same techniques as the wide angle panorama and it's ideal for capturing tall structures. The third format is very popular too. We are talking about the 180 degree panorama. This panorama covers 180 degree from left to right. These types of panoramas look very wide covering large area of the frame. Now going even wider, we are talking about the 360 degree panorama. It covers up to 360 degrees and it looks extremely wide. It actually covers the whole scene in single super wide image. And finally, the fifth format, the spherical panorama. This panorama is also known as a little planet. It is a 360 degree panorama that is converted to square spherical image using a special post-processing technique. Now in this next part, we are gonna very briefly talk about how to photograph panoramas. And the reason why we are gonna be brief is that in the next episode, I'm gonna actually take you out and show you and explain you how to photograph the panoramas. So very briefly, let's go back to the beginning and once again talk about what is panoramic photography. Well, once again, it is a special technique that stitches multiple images from the same camera together to form a single wide photograph. So when it comes to capturing the multiple images, you have a two options. 
you can shoot a horizontal shots and vertical shots. When it comes to capturing horizontal shots, it offers an easy method for quick panoramas where the resolution is not important. For example, for this panorama right here, I captured two images and just stitched them together. You can see we don't have much space on the top or bottom, however, it worked quite well. The preferred method works with the vertical shots. The benefit of the vertical images is that they offer more sky, more ground, and in overall, they offer higher resolution. So really, this is the reason why most of the photographers choose to shoot their panoramas with the vertical shots. Just like in this example here, you can see that this panorama was captured with four vertical shots. They were stitched together and it offers more sky. It offers more of the landscape and the picture itself would definitely have a higher resolution. Finally, when it comes to shooting the panoramas, the one most important thing is the image overlap. Now, depending on the resources, you will see information mentioning 20%, 30% or even 50% overlap on the images. This very much depends on the lens, on the scene, on the landscape, on the technique, on how far is the subject to the camera or how close and all of this together. So as a starting point, I suggest you to use 30% overlap on your images. Now looking at the images here, that's not exactly 30%. However, it gives you an idea on how the pictures were taken. So you can see the first image with the overlap together with the second. The second is already overlapping with the third as well and so on. So image overlap when it comes to capturing panorama, start with 30% and work from there. And finally, it's time to quickly look at the options when it comes to stitching and editing panoramas. Of course, that here on this channel, we're focusing on Luminar Neo and their new panorama stitching extension. However, you should know that there is a list of available applications and software on the market that can do exactly the same. For example, some of the most known names, Photoshop, Lightroom, PTGUI, and so on. But for us, we're going to be using the Luminar Neo and the Panorama Stitching. Now, when it comes to Panorama Stitching, most of the photo editing applications go through the five simple steps. First, you start by selecting the images you want to use for your panorama. After that, you move them or add them into the Panorama Stitching tool and you select your projection. When you select your projection and you're happy, then you transform the panorama. You make sure everything is aligned, everything is rotated right, and just everything looks right. When you finish with that, you take the image and you crop it. Crop it based on some of the presets or very freely, just based on what you're looking for. Once you finish with all of that, usually then you stitch the image together and then you start the editing process, just like with any other image. Now, in the final episode of this series, I'm going to show you the full step-by-step -step process on how to stitch the panorama in the panorama stitching extension of Luminar Neo. So I'm not going to go deep into it. We have many tutorials coming up about that. So I hope that this basic information will be helpful. In the meantime, I want to remind you that this tutorial was powered by our Luminar Neo Masterclass. When you're ready to unlock the true potential of this amazing photo editing application, this course is exactly for you. You will be able to dive deep into the world of Luminar Neo with our comprehensive course. It features over 70 lessons packed with over 6 hours of high quality 4K training videos. If you want to find out more about it, head to our website cleverphotographer.com and if you want to get the best possible price, make sure that you follow the link in the description of this video. And there you have it. If you want a copy of our popular Luminar Neo shortcut cheat sheet, there is nothing easier than heading to our website cleverphotographer.com slash Luminar Gift. While you're there, you can also check out one of our popular Luminar Neo products, or you can stay here and watch more videos about Luminar Neo. 
For today, I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please make sure that you like, comment, and share on this video. And also, don't forget to subscribe to our channel so we can keep creating content like this. For today, thank you very much for watching. My name is Jacob Bors, and I can't wait to see you in the next video.